It's the NFL on EA Sports. And the question is, are you ready for some football? It's going to be a good one. Next on Madden Football. Well, later tonight in November, snowfall is forecasted to hit the Twin Cities, but right now, calm outside, and of course, a calm day inside U.S. Bank Stadium in Minneapolis. Brandon Gaughan and Charles Davis on hand, kickoff just moments away. Charles, quickly, keys to the game. For me, it's coaching. Who prepared his team the best? That's who's going to come out of this one on top. A solid return, pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32. The Cardinals offense heading out, and they do so behind Kyler Murray, their dynamic quarterback in his sixth season now from Oklahoma. And now that he's back at full health, they're expecting Kyler to get back to being the superstar playmaker that they drafted. Make no mistake about it, when he's fully healthy, there aren't many quarterbacks who are as dynamic as he is. And if he's able to stay on the field, this team has a real chance to make some noise. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. First play and a first pass for Murray. Staying on his feet. Got a nice job to break free of one tackle, but it slowed his momentum somewhat, and he's taken down right after. Five yards on the game's first play, second down. And that's an early scramble that can be viewed positively by either side. From the offensive point of view, it begins to establish him as a possibility to keep it on certain plays. And defensively, they avoided giving up a huge play in one of their first tests in containing a quarterback on the run. Pass to the right, and he's got McBride. They picked up five yards last time. Now they double it and get 10 here. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to, pick up a first down. First carry for James Conner. And he'll manage to pick up about four. It's second down. And that was a quality play to start a new set of downs. That was simply an offensive line winning the battle up front and winning in a big way and giving their guy in the backfield a nice lane to hit. Ball right on the 50-yard line. Here's second and six. They'll fake it to Connor. Now Murray. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. A nifty bit of scrambling there. 12 yards, first down. I can't be sure how much of that was planned pre-snap, but it certainly opens up some avenues for their offense. And if he can stay a threat to break off those kind of runs, it'll pull defenders away from coverage and open up some choice throwing lanes for him moving forward. On first and 10 is Connor, And he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. Nice chunky yards on first down. It really opens up your options for what you want to do on second. You go right back to him and hope he explodes or sucker the defense in before throwing over the top. Line of scrimmage, the 24. This is second and six. And now Murray's going to set up the throw. And they eventually get to him at the 17 after a pickup of 17 into the red zone, first down. Fast, slow, it doesn't matter. If you give a quarterback enough room to escape, he can hit you for a big game. You've got to give him a little more focus moving forward. So from the 17 now, here's a first and 10. Murray again, this is Connor. And they work this near the five. He'll be stopped at the six. 
11 more yards that go around, a first down as well. They've taken this opening kickoff and marched it right down the field defensively. Not much resistance. And that's the point because my admiration is for the guys moving the ball right now. They know what they're doing. Their plan is working. But I flip it over and watch and say, okay, what are you going to do to change things up? Because if you don't, they're going to put that ball in the end zone real soon. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. They'll say no gain on the play, and it'll be second and goal. I know the speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. They come up here with another shot from the six-yard line, and it's second and goal now. Again, a run with Connor. And he'll take this one in for the Arizona touchdown. James Connor. A six-yard touchdown run. And the Cardinals get the upper hand as they're on the board first here this afternoon. Uh, first quarter, maybe too early to talk about statement drives, Charles, but that sure seemed like a statement drive right there. Well, if we're going to talk about statement drives, I think what they're saying is we're going to establish the run. They gave it to him early and often on this drive, and he wound up taking it into the end zone. Chad Ryland now to add the PAT. And the Cardinals will go up 7 to nothing. That time, a nine-play drive. And it was a touchdown run by James Conner that was the exclamation mark. Ryland now following the touchdown back out to kick it away. Oh, a good return up past the 30. And a great return, solid field position. He's up all the way to the 45-yard line. The Vikings offense making their way out behind their former number three overall pick, who spent his last year as a 49er. It's Sam Darnold. And he's still been looking for that one situation to allow all of his talents to come together. He's hoping that he found it here. Plenty of playmakers on the outside and a team that's willing to run the football to let his talent shine. Good starting field position for him as they come up first and 10 at the 45. Now off the bootleg, Darnold. And the pressure will bring him down here. The Cardinals get home for the sack. It's Zayvon Collins who got in there to get the sack. And so much for that great field position to start the game. Now they're way behind the sticks. Can't wait to see what their second down call is going to look like now. And the job becomes twice as difficult now. After the sack, it's second and 20. Now the man from UTEP. This is Aaron Jones. And he's got it up over the 40 to the 41. Call it a six-yard gain. Still plenty of work to do coming up. Third and 14. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent gain. Going to need a crafty play call here. 14 yards is what they need to try to convert this thing. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he will have a Vikings first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Plenty of things to talk about here, partner. But to me, their defense gave up a touchdown on the first drive. How about how they're responding, coming back? That's a big third down pickup to keep their drive alive. Back to throw, Darnold. And he's got this to Jefferson. And he'll cross over out of bounds right at the 25. 18 yards the gain for number 18. Well, I think when they look at their offense, they think to themselves, weapons, weapons everywhere. And they want to move the ball around. They want to spread it to different people. But you absolutely know 
They want to get this man involved as well, and that's what they just did on that play. And this is incomplete. Oh, he had six points right in his hands, but could not hang on. Oh, that's some good closing speed there defensively because that looked open for a minute. But that's great work with the ball in the air. Never gave up, converged on his man, and broke the play up. Up the middle, Jones. And he's going to take this one down to about the 23-yard line. They do get a couple, but they'll be left staring at a third and eight coming up. But not much on that run, Charles. No, that's exactly the way to execute a run blitz there. They guessed correctly that they would move the ball on the ground, honed in on it, and stopped them. Mark that down for a win in the defense's column. Here's Darnold. Buying time to his left. And he'll have the first down, getting this one to the 14-yard line. That'll go as a pickup of eight. With nowhere to throw it, decided to scramble, and a nice job, CD. Got the yardage that he needed. Yeah, and his teammates are certainly going to appreciate that effort, even if his coaches don't, because they would have wanted him to slide and protect himself. But he chose team gain over personal protection. That's over the middle. He finds Naylor. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. And I think this is a route we'll see more of as this game goes on because with his speed, they want to get him the ball in space on drag routes just like this. They want him to get the ball and run after the catch. Good job there, though, holding him for a short game. Darnold now to throw. Flushed out right. And he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. L.J. Collier. He's the one that got home and takes him down for a loss of nine. So now make that a second sack for them on this drive. And Brandon, we hear it every week when we go out to do a game. Everyone talks about playing complimentary football. Their offense goes down and scores. They see that, and they want to back them up, and that they did, getting two sacks on this first drive. Backed up here, tough spot, needing 11 yards to pick up the first. To throw is Darnold. Now the pressure gets to him again. Kaiser White, the former safety, gets the sack. Well, it's about how teams are so competitively matched and you just want to make those plays that give you an advantage. How about right here? The difference between letting them score a touchdown versus holding them to a field goal? That's absolutely huge with the play he just made. And you know he hated taking the loss there on third down. Now the Vikings will send out the special teams crew here for a field goal try. This a 40-yard attempt from the left hash. And this one is right through. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's 7-3. So both teams come away with points on their opening drives, and they still trail. They answered the touchdown with a field goal, but at least able to break that goose egg here early. And that is what's important, right? Because they didn't let that initial touchdown go unanswered. Took the ball themselves, moved it downfield, and put it through the post for three points. Game on. Minnesota's kick team ready, and the Vikings boom it away. And he takes this near the 25, just a little pass there. Call it the 26. So the Cardinals offense back onto the field here for their second drive of the game. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out. Looking to repeat that in Charles's defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. And he'll manage to pick up about four. It's second down. Well, on every play call, you realize it's not going to go for a touchdown, so a lot of your calls are setting things up for maybe later in the game, trying to establish the inside run, run with toughness now, hopefully get to the perimeter later, and let's face it, you could do worse than a four-yard run on first down. 
Connor going to get it again on second down. And he'll be upended at the 33 following a gain of three. And guess what? It brings up third down. Three yards is half of what they needed. Now can they get the other three here on third down? After one, 7-3 the score on EA Sports. Cardinal football here to start quarter number two. They'll come up now third and three as they've got it as we resume action. Murray now to throw. And this pass broken up. And the contact well timed there and now fourth down. And this is what you want to see from a defense. Give up an opening drive touchdown, that's fine. But how about them going back out there, recommitting themselves to the task at hand and forcing a three and out and giving the ball back to their offense. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. And a fair catch signaled for and taken just outside the 20-yard line. So a change of possession here on the punt. And it will be Vikings ball first and ten. Off of play action, Darnold. Pass complete to Naylor, right side. Only able to gain a couple there, and it'll be second down. Now Darnold. Setting up the screen here, Aaron Jones. They get seven there on the screen. It'll set up a third down. And that doesn't have to gain big yardage to be an impactful play because if you can get those pass rushers second-guessing themselves that they might get hit with a screen, maybe you can wind up slowing them down just a step. And if you do that, that's a win for that play. The Vikings on third down. They've been okay, two for three thus far. They need just a yard here. It's third and one. Completes this to Addison out left. So nothing doing there. And it'll be fourth down. Excuse my snarkiness here, but isn't the idea of completing a pass supposed to mean you get downfield and gain yards? Especially on third down. Yeah, that one. How about the defense? Figured that one out in a big way. Yeah, they completed it all right and lost yardage. So they're forced to punt on fourth as this one's away. It's a 40-yard punt, four yards on the return, and the Cards will take over first and 10. Arizona's offense back out and ready to go. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away, whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach... Can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? Able to get this one. To... Oh, he put it on the carpet, a fumble. And the Vikings pick up the football. Always costly to cough up that football. These defenders, they become so adept on jarring a free. Yeah, it's amazing that there are more fumbles caused because now if you're an offensive player, you go through ball security drills every single day. It's really not out of line to think you should take the ball to bed with you and just hold on to it. <laughs> but the bottom line is, no matter how much you try to protect it, these guys are pretty good at finding ways to knock it out. Now the Vikings offense works their way back onto the field. And Charles, a very uninspired effort the last time we saw them out there. It was a quick three and out, then they punted the football. Yeah, and you never want to get stopped so soundly during a series. But what would be even worse now? Is letting it happen again right here. They've got to get going. And now, as with every potential turnover, they're going to take a second look at this just to make sure. Now, the question, was the knee, in fact, down before this ball comes loose? And is the video convincing enough to overturn it? A lot of factors here. Remember, you also need clear possession of the football afterwards. This is a tough one to overturn.
So that one overturned. They say the knee was down, and that will not be ruled a fumble. This is Connor running right. Oh, a solid stiff arm and some open field. And he's got it across the midfield stripe and into Viking territory. 40 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. You know what really fires up offensive linemen? When the guy that is carrying the ball behind them can create his own space and break a tackle along the way. More muscle up front for this second and two. They've got three tight ends out there. Murray now. A uh, short one here caught by McBride. Third catch of this first half for him, and this one is a first down. And the tight end is certainly a position built to move the chains because they can control space underneath. If they've got good hands, then, of course, they're a dynamic target. But one other thing is they're right in the sight lines of a quarterback on just about every play, and that makes it easier for the quarterback to pick him out and deliver. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. That was a good run, and it got to the second level. And what I mean by that is that's where the linebackers usually play, first level being the defensive front, last level being the secondary. But the strong safety position ended up making the tackle, and oftentimes we call them a hybrid. Combination defensive back, combination linebacker. We saw the linebacker make the stop. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. He got maybe a half yard at most, but officially they'll be left with a third and two. An extra defender in the secondary for the Vikings here on third down. They'll try to run for it with Connor. And just nowhere to go for Connor. Defense gets to him and they mark him short. That'll bring up fourth. They had the eight-yard gain on first down, but unable to do much from there. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. Would have been right at about a 52-yard field goal try, but no, they are going to go for this thing on fourth down. They'll run for it with Connor. And boy, this is going to be close. That mark looks a little short, and he didn't get there. The Cardinals unable to convert there on fourth down. And the Vikings defense is going to get the football back. Well, their first fourth down attempt earlier was successful. This one backfires for a turnover on downs. I like their aggressiveness. I like what they're doing. They got it the first time they went for it. Why not a second time? I don't think they'll be daunted from attempting it again. If you're on the defensive side of the ball, though, any fourth down stop is a big momentum play. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Darnold. Going underneath, he's got Hawkinson. And he goes out right around the 39. And that's good for a gain of six. And that's going to bring up second down. And there's a completion to the tight end. And look at the size of these players nowadays. At that spot, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and up. A lot of guys used to be basketball players, somehow came back to football. And that's really good for the game of football. You get better athleticism, great hand-eye coordination, guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. And able to get a couple as he's across the 40 to the 41. He's definitely tough to get down. We just saw it right there. But how about what we did see? Pursuit, wrap up, and then the big finish with the tackle. They'll come to the line, needing only two yards to gain the first here. They'll try and run for it with Jones. And he will have a Vikings first down. At least it appears that way. And he got it by maybe the length of a football. I think I saw a lot of shoulders just drop there. And what I mean by that is they finally were able to relax a little bit because that was an important play call. They needed to pick up that first down at this stage of the game. Yeah, couldn't afford another quick drive and out. Now a first down carry by Jones. And a lane slow and materializing there as he'll get maybe a yard up to the 45. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. 
Now second and nine. And they'll try the air now with Darnold. And that's to the left sideline and incomplete. After an incomplete pass on second down, that'll leave him trying to convert on third and nine. Here's Darnold. Going underneath, he's got Hawkinson. He's brought down after a pickup of five, but he needed eight. Fourth down. Looked like the screen pass was taken away there, but what a nice job improvising, finding other options, and completing the pass anyway. So on fourth down, on is the punter, Ryan Wright. And this is a beauty as that ball is going to angle out at the six-yard line. There's James Conner now as he trots back onto the field. He's over 40 yards here in the second quarter. Been nice and effective for them, hasn't he? He has definitely been dependable and really shouldn't underestimate what he's getting done here because anytime you're on a pace that's going to approach 100 yards, you've really done some damage in an NFL game. And now he's looking just to add to his totals. Play action. Now it's Murray. He'll get this one complete to Zay Jones. And they work this out past the 25. A good pick up there, a 22. Certainly no settling into the drive there. They came right out on the first play and attacked the middle of the field for a big gainer and a first down. Here's Murray. He'll find Jones again, complete. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. Another first down as they call his number again. He's got 15 yards here. That connection seemed to work out okay on the first play of the drive. Why not go right back to it? And once again, this defense is left without an answer as they surrender back-to-back -back first downs. Two minutes to play in this first half. 7-3, our score. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. Throwing now is Murray. Got his man. It's Dorch. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. Two yards to go, second down. Now Murray. And he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. It'll go as a loss of three on the sack, and it brings up third down. And this is a quarterback who's already had success on the ground of this first half, but this time they're able to hem him in. And it's always different when you rush a mobile quarterback as opposed to a guy you know will be right back in the pocket. In this case, you got to make sure the inside pressure and the outside pressure match and maybe even a second wave to make sure if he squirts free, you've got someone to tackle him. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. As expected, he's gone to him several times in this game, but that's the first time one has slipped from his grasp. I bet he goes back to him, though. He's an excellent player. Blake Gillikin on the punt now on fourth down. Oh, this is off the side of his foot. And this punt goes out of bounds, and it'll be marked inside the 40. The Vikings going to take over now late in this first half. And with good starting field position and three timeouts as well in their pocket, no reason not to try and put a late scoring drive together. Good starting field position for the Vikings as they have it first and 10 at their own 37. Now it's Darnold. Open man is Naylor. He's got it. 
The Vikings going to signal for the first of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with just under 50 seconds remaining in half number one. Darnold from the gun. And his throw is going to be incomplete. You've always been very good about checking my math. Am I correct? That's the first time that it's been incomplete when they've thrown it to him? Yes, he had caught every other ball coming his way. So they feel like they've got something really good going there, and they're going to continue to go there until the defense makes an adjustment and takes it away. Well, they finally made an adjustment there. We'll see if they can build on that stop. Throwing again on second and 10. Darnold, throw left side, taken in by Jefferson. Now the Vikings will use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. So third and two, this quite possibly four down territory though if they're stopped. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he will have a Vikings first down as they get five there on third and two. Got to say, I was a little surprised to see him, Charles, come out in the shotgun on third and less than a yard. Yeah, but the way the NFL is nowadays, we hardly ever see anyone really run for it on short yardage. So they're going to throw the football more times than not. That was a nice, easy rhythm throw right there, and they pick up the first down. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. The Vikings going to use their third and final timeout as they'll stop it with 14 seconds to go in this first half. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. Throwing again is Darnold. That to the sideline, and it's intercepted. And they will score. It's a pick six for the Cardinals' touchdown. An excellent play there, CD, on the pick six. And I, I think they, were they a nickel? Did they have an extra DB out there? Yeah, Brandon, I think they were in standard nickel, not the uh, Buffalo, as teams like to call it, meaning three safeties for big nickel. They just wanted to take away the quarterback's throwing lanes, and that's exactly what they did and came through with a big-time pick six. Now Ryland for the PAT. And this one's right through to make it a 14-3 ball game. So the defense creating some points, not only getting the interception, but then returning it to the end zone for the pick six. So still time for the kickoff here. One second to go in the half as this one is away. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. So we have reached halftime with the visiting Cardinals out in front. As we'll send you down to Orlando, we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. We watched the veteran James Conner put together a very solid first half. He wound up finding the end zone on a touchdown run to help give his guys the advantage here at the break. We were certainly treated to an entertaining first half. Both these teams with some high points and maybe a couple of low points as well. So it's going to be a question of who can be the most disciplined team going forward. All right, Coach. Thank you very much as we welcome you back for quarter number three.
Ready for the second half. 14 to 3 our score as we are back underway on EA Sports. Now a crease here as he's past the 30. And they got to be pleased with this. He brings it all the way up to the 40-yard line. The Vikings head out to take over once again. And they have had their problems moving the ball through the air as we take you through some of the action from earlier. This secondary has played about as well as you can. Many times they've left this quarterback with nowhere to go with the football. During the week, the special teams coach puts together a game plan that he presents to the head coach. And in every game plan, there's one big play that he points to the head coach and says, listen, when we need it, we can go to it. I think they did exactly that on that one. The Minnesota offense about ready to get this next drive underway. This offense, Charles, had a strong first half throwing the football, at least in terms of yardage, but that hasn't translated so far on the scoreboard as they begin the third quarter here trailing and looking for a little momentum. Yeah, you're right about that because, you know, let's face it, in the first half, most of their focus was in the passing game, and to their credit, resulted in a healthy amount of yardage. So I would think that at halftime, they're going to anticipate that defense loosening up a little bit to try and cover the passing lanes. They've got to get the running game going, and there should be some gaps to run through now. That's to the left side where he's got Nailer. And they're going to be set up down around the 15-yard line. 36 yards on the play. And that might be exactly what they needed to wake up this home crowd. They haven't given them much to cheer for so far and never underestimate the effect the home crowd with you can have on a game. So after the big play, look at this, all the way down at the 15 now on first and 10. Back to throw, Darnold. And he's got it. And he will score. Touchdown, Vikings. Justin Jefferson, a 15-yard touchdown grab. And the Vikings have cut it back within a score. And that touchdown drive happened very, very quickly. You knew that they had the quick strike ability. They showed it. And for a defense that understands that, it still drives them crazy when it actually happens to them. Fast and furious, there came the points. Kevin O'Connell choosing to leave his guys out there, and they'll go for two. They're going to throw for the two with Darnold, and he's got it. So the try for two successful, and with it, they're back within a field goal. I guess the coach looked at the two-point cheat sheet, said go for it, get it to a three-point game, and they did it. Yeah, and sometimes you just throw out time of game. You don't worry about that. There's just a feel sometimes in making that call, and he felt good about what he had for a two-point conversion, and now they're only down three and feeling great about themselves. Minnesota's kick team ready, and the Vikings boom it away. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. The Cardinals offense now ready to get their first opportunity here in the second half. But Charles, they still have the lead despite their defense giving up a touchdown on the previous possession. And even though they have that lead, it feels like a back-and-forth ball game where to try to get momentum back, Maybe they need at least three here on this drive. I think you're right about that, Brandon, because your game plan doesn't change. But I do believe your urgency does because of the last score that went against your team. So what you want to do now is have your own drive and try and make sure that that momentum stays in your camp. And yeah, they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. Good yardage there on first down, exactly what you want. Get yourself set up to keep making first downs, keep the clock running. And if they're smart, you're starting to milk the clock. No hurry before you run your second down play. Second and a couple. Toss play, Connor. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. 
Four yards the pick up, first down. Second and two is prime time for a little bit of a gamble, isn't it? Open up the playbook, go play action, toss that bad boy deep. But in this situation, go ahead and give it to your back. Let him pick up a first down, keep the sticks moving. Here's Murray as he sets to throw it. Jones has it. And he gets this one to midfield before he's brought down. 12 yards to pick up. Good enough for an Arizona first. I think that's a big pickup for a first down because when you run a drag route against zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well, there they ran into a first down. Executed it to perfection. They run behind center with Cotter. He'll take this to the 46. I feel like I could see what he was thinking on that carry. He wanted to follow that big tackle through the hole. Ended up only getting four yards on the carry. I think he had designs on that one being bigger. From the 46-yard line, a second down and six. To throw is Murray. He's got McBride here over the middle. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings' 29-yard line. A nice pickup of 17 yards. And that's a more than acceptable read right there because it's zone coverage, so timing is everything. This time he waits for his man to come open, puts it right on him, and they pick up a first down. Murray going to throw. He'll get that complete to Harrison. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. This drive, it's been a good mix. Three passing plays, three runs. Hitting on all three of those passes, and the last one putting him in the red zone. So wouldn't you think play action right here? Because you've got the ability and had the ability to run it and throw it. Go play action and take your shot at the end zone. Connor up the middle. And brought down, but not before they get it inside the 10 to the 7. 78 yards for him on the ground now as he has been terrific here this afternoon. Looks to me like maybe there's a little attrition setting in with this drive. Because when you see that type of a run, I get the feeling the defense getting a little bit tired. And that's the last thing they need, especially when they look up at the scoreboard. Here's Murray. The quick slant caught. That'll bring up second and goal after the gain of five. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. Murray now to throw. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. That incompletion certainly makes this upcoming third down a little bit more crucial. They need to find the right play to convert here and maybe start to tamp down a little bit of the momentum. The other side is starting the game. A big play forthcoming. Here's third and goal. To throw, it's Murray. Eluding under pressure now, and he's going to go down. Sack back around the eight. Jonathan Bowler in there to drop him for a six-yard loss, and that will lead to fourth down. They've been moving the ball well offensively, really getting into a groove. Last play, pass completion. Now, finally, the defense gets there. And you have to find a way to disrupt their rhythm. Do you do it with coverage, or do you do it with pressure? They elected to go with pressure, and it was the right call. And his kick is good. Well, I don't know if they would have gone for it on fourth and goal anyway, but the sack on third down pretty much made their mind up for them. You're exactly right about that. And this is a tough place on the field to take a sack because, as you just noted, it took the decision-making away from them. Now they have to go for a field goal instead of potentially going for it. Back out is the kicker, Ryland, and he'll send this one away. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. 
Justin Jefferson and the rest of this offense, they've got their helmets back on, and they're ready for this next series. Pretty good game for him so far. I guess he's still got time here to make this a great game, but so far, he's been solid. I like where you're going with that because it has been pretty good, but there's always that hint that things can really escalate for him. And right now, they, they feel like they're somewhat keeping him in check, but he has found the end zone once. But, boy, he can explode at any moment. Yeah, and when you hit that end zone once, you want to find it again, don't you? <laughs> yes, they, you do. It you get you hungrier. You, you get greedy in a good way. This one swung out here to Jones. It'll go down as a gain of six, and that'll bring up second down. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you just swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. Out of the shotgun, here's Darnold. This one brought in by Jefferson. And Jefferson's going to have the Vikings first down as he's up to the 43. Seven yards there, good enough to move the sticks. Well, if you do read man coverage, Brandon, the drag route's a pretty good one to run against it because you're running away from people on it. Another one on this play for Justin Jefferson. So give him two yards there on the completion, and it's second down. The goal of a wide receiver screen is get enough blockers in front to create a wall and let him pick his spot to run the football. How about the defense there swarming to it and not allowing that to happen? Did not let him get downfield. Again, Darnold. That is caught by Josh Oliver, the former San Jose State Spartan. So the completion good for six yards. And yeah, that's going to bring up third and two. Let's not quibble about the game there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take-what-you-can-guess situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives a much better opportunity to convert on third down. On third down, here's Jones. And he has the first down yardage before they bring him down right at the 45. Four yards on the pickup, good enough to extend the drive. I have to think a major focus of the halftime means had to be figuring out how to create space for the running game to get operating. Well, what you pointed out to me at half seems accurate. That line has struggled to sustain blocks. Yeah, I would agree with that totally. They've got to focus on staying on their double teams at the first level, make sure that block's secured before they slide off and try and chip someone at the second level. Just a gain of a couple there. And it'll be second down. All defenses worry that whenever anyone catches the ball and has a head of steam come out of the backfield, it could turn into a big play with missed tackles or he runs through people. But they were right there waiting, and they stopped him for a minimal gain. Now off the bootleg, Darnold. And he's got this to Jefferson. And they're going to have another first down as the tackle's made here at the Cardinals' 27-yard line. A new set of downs after a strong pickup of 16 yards. That's the third time on this drive that these two have connected with each other. They've got a real rapport going, and right now it's paying off for big chunks of yardage as shown by that last play. They go back to the ground with Jones. And they do get him down, but not before he's able to slip it inside the five-yard line. It'll be first and goal when we come back. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. And we return welcoming you back to Minneapolis. It's the Vikings in possession of the football, but they need some points. They're trailing here to start the fourth. Darnold. Nothing open downfield, so he'll throw it away. Down this close to the goal line, first down. Surprised that wasn't a run? I am, and you know I'm old school. I want to run the ball on first down in this situation because second down, that gives me that option of running play action and maybe throwing it. Line of scrimmage, again the four-yard line, second and goal. 
The play fake, and it's Darnold. And he'll just get rid of it. All right, Captain. It's batting down the hatches time defensively. Dodged two pass attempts to the end zone. Now what do you think they're going to try and dial up on third and goal? Well, knowing them and knowing what we've just seen, I think they're throwing it again, don't you? I think you have to. I think in this situation, you've kind of run out of your running plays. Fire another one into the end zone. Third and goal at the four-yard line. And that one going nowhere from the start as he's met in the backfield and goes backwards. A loss of a yard, and it brings up fourth. I know this is your spot, partner, so forgive me for jumping in, but there's no decision right here. They have to go for it in this situation. They're down on the scoreboard. How many other opportunities are you going to get? Yeah, I'm with you. Fourth quarter, like you said, down on the scoreboard. And remember here, a field goal virtually does them no good. Fourth down, and for Darnold, it's desperation time. Dance into his left. They're turned away on fourth and goal. And this Cardinal defense comes up with a goal line stand. Everyone gears up for third down, talks about the importance of it. But fourth down, that's truly the moment of truth play, isn't it? Everything's dialed up a little bit more. And, it, you know, it's such a momentum play, isn't it? Absolutely, because it can flip either way depending on who converts on fourth down. And the Cardinals getting set to trot out there now. Their defense forced the turnover on downs. They've got the lead. They're in good shape, but can't go into a shell here, right? Still got to be careful. Yeah, because they're still a long way away from kneel down time. So they've got work on getting first downs, keep the sticks moving, right? Keep the clock going, and above all, ball security. Don't turn it over. It's Connor as they stay on the ground. And he will forge his way forward only up to the two-yard line. Tackle there by Jerry Tillery. And for the defense, this is a spot where you don't want to totally sell out to stop the run, but you do have a pretty good idea of what you're going to see. And that's good work right there to keep them in check on that first down carry. Second and nine. From his own end zone now, it's Murray. This complete to Jones. That'll give him eight that time, and it'll leave him with third and a full yard to go. He decided to run a hitch route. It really helped to have a guy who can turn it loose, and boy, he rifled one in there on that one. Not much run after catch, but it worked really well. The Cardinals on third down. Not good. 0 for 4 thus far. They're up against a third and one situation. Murray now. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he is going to have a Cardinals first down as they're able to convert by plenty there on third and one. And that pickup of a first down, that's going to leave a mark because they really needed to stop them there, didn't they? Well, so frustrating. Defensively, you're a play away from getting that football back here down late. Tough. Now they've got to find a way to create a turnover or takeaway. Otherwise, this one will probably get away from them. And he's going to be met at the line of down. They've called his number a lot this afternoon. You wonder how much tread is left on those tires. We certainly do, but I always think back to one of my favorite coaches in the NFL, and he used to have a meeting with his running backs every year in the offseason and say, look, as many times as you're going to carry the ball, you should be able to carry it one more time, so make sure you get in shape. And he'll take this up only to about his 18-yard line. Two runs in a row, but only two yards to show for it. A tight game like this, such a tough spot for the offense to be in, even though they have the lead, Charles, back up so close to their goal line. they got to protect the football. And that's when you have to take care of your team with play calling as well. Not a lot of misdirection, not a lot of counters, not a lot of plays where you have extra ball handling. Get it right to the... And he can't find anywhere to go with it, and he goes down. You know, on these types of plays, we're always looking to assess blame. Okay, where did it break down? Sometimes it's just a great play. Here comes the Cardinals punter now, standing right on his own five-yard line. So possession goes over here on the punt. And the Vikings will take over here first and 10. The Vikings offense and Sam Darnold headed back out there. 
And he has been masterful so far in leading this offense. He's kept the mistakes to a minimum. He's been on point with his passes. And he's generally been one step ahead of this defense all game long. Here are the Vikings now to start their next drive. Their defense accomplished step one of the mission. They forced the punt. Now they'll look to erase that deficit and take a fourth quarter lead. And he fights forward for a modest two-yard gain, second down. Certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground, but I think the play gets made by the defensive front because if they can't get upfield, their job is to go ahead and get low, almost get into a ball sometimes, stack things up, and make it difficult for the runner to find a hole. And here's Jones again on second down. And only a couple there as he'll take this up to the 47. Sometimes your philosophies get challenged at times you don't want them to. They did try to stick to the running game on the first two plays. Didn't amount to much. And now facing a third and long at the outset of this drive. The cards going nickel. An extra defensive back out there now on third down. Here's Darnold. Setting up the screen here, Aaron Jones. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage on the play back at the 46. They call it a loss of a yard there. And that's going to bring up a fourth down. Heck of a play there to get to him quickly and get him down for a loss. I think they did a really nice job getting ready for this game, scouting, watching film, and understanding defensively what the play design was. And here's Ryan right now as he's on to punt for Minnesota. And the kick's away as he angles this one for the sideline. The Cardinals offense and their veteran running back James Conner ready for this next possession. And he has put in a full game's work and then some. Just an incredible performance on the ground to this point in the fourth quarter. Ready to go with their next drive and at the line, the Cardinal offense. Their defense got the stop, forced the punt, and now you really start to monitor the clock as they nurse this slim lead. And he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. Good push from the offensive line, and they've done well so far to build this lead. Now they've got to get things to the finish line, and that's a solid pickup there to begin the drive. Ball on the 27 here, second and six. Throwing now is Murray. Throw is going to be incomplete. I see the surprise in your face there, partner. That is a rare incompletion from him. He's been on point this entire game. He has percentage completion wise way up, not that time. So after the second down incompletion, they'll come up now against a third and six. Now Murray. A uh, short one here, caught by McBride. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Fifth catch of the afternoon, and that gives him a first down. And that certainly appears to be a critical conversion right there because not only do they keep the drive going, they take valuable time off the clock as well. They have to feel really good about that last completion. Clock running under four to play now as they come up on first and ten. There's Murray. The improv on the scramble there gets him six, and it'll be second down. You know what I like about that play? He didn't try to do too much on first down. He took what the defense gave him, put together a solid game to bring up second and manageable. Now they have a couple of plays to pick up just a few yards and a new set of downs. Clock continuing to run. They'll probably wind this all the way before snapping it on second down. Out of the gun. They'll look to throw. Flush to his right. That one a broken play, but it ends up being a good play. The scramble goes for 20. Well, there you go. Save your best scramble of the day for a big-time situation in the fourth quarter, picking up the first. You don't want to use it up early, right? You want to make sure you save it for that exact moment, that key time. And that's what he did, although you and I both know it wasn't planned that way. But what a nice job using his eyes, scanning the field, and realizing when it was time to exit the pocket and go. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. 
Well, at this stage, that's exactly what you want offensively. Good run on first down, stay in bounds, keep that clock rolling. And look at that play chart that the play caller has in his hands right now. That's what you got to focus in on because that's divided up by sections. And right now, he's looking at that four-minute offense section. What running plays do we have to bleed down the clock and take care of the football? Right now, they're executing really well. He's going to get it again. Just looking to get forward and protect the ball. And now right out of the two-minute break, we'll get a timeout used defensively with a minute 56 to go. And Connor going to pick up a Cardinals first down as he's brought down at the 16. Murray now running right on the option. He's down inside the 10 to the 8. And it comes on a gain of 8. Now the Vikings will use the second of their timeouts. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. So they come up on second down. If they can get another run like we just saw, would likely put an end to this thing. Again, Murray will keep it. And he stopped immediately there. The Vikings going to use their third and final timeout as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Here's third and three. From the gun, again to counter. And the Cardinals are going to have a first down. And that's a big one, as they should be able to run it out from here. I like that run right there, partner. Not the flashiest run, not the one that's going to break for big yardage, but he understands the situation. And taking care of the football, paramount, and he got it done. Nursing that slim lead, you're exactly right. Hold on to that ball. Down to a knee. Here's the Cardinals look to let the clock roll. To a knee goes Murray, and that should just about do it. Yeah, it's fun to kneel down in front of your home crowd, but when you go on the road, that band of brothers attitude, right, just us against the world, and get it done, <laughs> how happy are they? I remember a coach at a previous stop telling me, you get a win on the road, doesn't matter the opponent, get out of there like you stole something, and they, <laughs> they did in this one. So it's a win here for the Arizona Cardinals, and they were spurred on by a strong performance in that fourth quarter as they held their opponents off the scoreboard. Everyone wants to pitch a shutout for the entire game, but when you throw one in the fourth quarter, that tells everyone that you're getting stronger and dominance is starting to take over, right? The way that you close, the way that you finish, that gets preached to you from the time you're playing Little League football all the way up through, and they closed them out with a big-time performance down the stretch. So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. From Minneapolis, so long, everybody.